Hello and what is up my friends, it's Thunderbob here, and tonight we're going to be taking a look at Hogwarts Legacy. The first couple of minutes of this video are going to be Steam Deck footage, and then I will be shifting to PC Ultrawide footage. But to start with, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. I've read the books, I've watched the movies, I really do enjoy the series. And I beat the game now almost exclusively playing on my Steam Deck in just a few short sessions on my PC. But I've put upwards of 60 hours into the game at this point, beating the main mission, the majority of the side missions, and a good amount of the open world stuff as well. I've got some thoughts on the game, which I'd like to share. So I do want to touch on the elephant in the room to start with. I'm not down with the hate that JK Rowling's been throwing around lately, but I did think about it and I decided it was still worth playing this game for a couple of reasons. First off, I'm a big fan of the series. In fact, when I was younger, I used to watch these movies with my father, who passed away about two years ago. We really connected over them. And the idea that I could walk around Hogwarts and remember even a little bit of that feeling we shared made it kind of hard to pass the game up. Second, the fact that she had very little to do with the game. You know, this game was made by hundreds of developers who have nothing to do with the controversy at all that she created. Lastly, if I gave up every piece of media with a problematic history, I wouldn't really have anything left to read, watch, or play. I mean, look up almost anything that you enjoy and I'm sure you'll find something questionable about it. About the creator, the company who owns the property, or some element in the property. So, after a lot of really soul searching and thinking about it, I decided to play the game. So with that said, let's get into the game itself. Is it good? Yes. Is it perfect? Well, no. Uh, I'm going to talk first about the Steam Deck and its performance. Um, now that a few patches have dropped, the game runs reasonably well. Uh, you know, you can expect 30 to 40 FPS uh, with mostly low settings. I am running the Cryo Utilities 2.0. I've got the, op the Steam Deck basically optimized as much as possible, and I'm running the game on the built-in um, hard drive. And uh, generally it's 30 to 40, very occasionally you'll get some dips below that, especially when you're loading into a new area, though they've mostly fixed the stutters caused by entering new areas through patches. Um, but it runs reasonably well, flying around real quickly is probably the, the place where it's the most demanding, but you don't really need high frames per second to fly around you know, the overworld. Um, it's mostly when you get into combat that the FPS really matters here. It's perfectly playable. You know, I've played through pretty much the entire game, going through all of the combat encounters uh, on the Steam Deck. I really never ran into any problems and had a fun experience the whole way through. With that said, this game does look spectacular on PC and it supports ultra wide really, really nicely. And we're going to jump to that footage after I murder these guys. And now we've shifted to the PC footage. And I do have uh, some benchmarks going on here. Um, you know, after a few patches, the stutters and issues with loading has mostly been fixed on the PC also. But just overall, the performance is not amazing. I'm running a uh, RTX 3080 at 10,700K, both overclocked um, a little bit. And uh, 32 gigs of RAM, all this installed on a really fast NVMe drive. And I still rarely go above, you know, 60 to 80 FPS in the overworld inside you know, dungeons and areas like that, it goes up higher, maybe 100, 120, but uh, it is kind of inconsistent. The game does support uh, most modern features, you know, DLSS, FSR 2.0, ray tracing, um, and uh, the game looks pretty nice, though it doesn't look, you know, good enough that I feel like it should run this poorly at times. Like, I realize I don't have the fourth generation, like there's new cards out now, and my CPU is like two, three years old. But I still have a pretty high-end system, and I was expecting a little bit better performance. Though I think this is becoming the norm with PC releases lately. So many of them have come out with tons of PC bugs, with tons of stuttering issues, trigger caching issues. It's kind of just the way that the industry's going. Um, not as much optimization, and since they're now using like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series as their kind of mainline system, those systems have a lot more RAM, a lot more video RAM, higher end you know processors and they're not optimizing them as well and when they come to the pc uh you know they're becoming more and more demanding so it may be time for me to upgrade the biggest hindrance i think is the 3080 i have is the 10, gig 10 gigabyte version and i'm definitely running into the upper limits of the vram uh, at times so getting past the performance issues uh, i really did enjoy the game and especially the first few hours of the game exploring hogwarts and then hogsmeade 
is a pretty magical experience if you're a fan of the series. I do feel as you progress through the game, and especially as you get into the open world, it loses some of that magic, but it's worth it for the first few hours at least. The story is serviceable, but ridiculously cliché. You're this chosen one, with access to previously unknown, and probably never mentioned again, ancient magic. You enter Hogwarts as a fifth year student, who's received some schooling from a teacher who took you in. You're immediately a prodigy at nearly everything, and everyone loves you. Except there's this evil goblin running amok who wants your power. There's some fun side quests, especially those involving some of your classmates. You help this one Slytherin named Sebastian try to save his sister, and honestly it's better than the main quest, and almost feels like it should have been the focus of the game. As a Harry Potter fan, there are some serious elements you just kind of have to ignore to enjoy the game. Like I'm constantly murdering people in the worst ways. Burning them, using unforgivable curses, literally turning them into exploding barrels to use them to kill other enemies. In some cases, these are literally just poachers hunting animals. I murder them, and then I steal the animals and add them to my own menageries. By the end of the game, I've certainly murdered more people than Voldemort and all of his Death Eaters combined. What's worse is none of the other students or teachers really comment or act like this is out of the ordinary. Use Crucio in front of the headmaster? No effect at all. It just feels very out of place in the series if you've read the books or watched the movies. My headcanon is that you're secretly an Auror who's been stationed at Hogwarts, 21 Jump Street style, in order to track down this Goblin Rebellion. The next major issue really starts when you get into the overworld. While there's a good number of main story missions and side missions with unique objectives, interesting characters, and locations, there are also hundreds or perhaps even thousands of pips on the map that are largely just copy and pasted. Most of these become repetitive after doing them the first time. There's literally 92 Merlin challenges. These are little puzzles in the overworld that feel a bit like the shrines from Breath of the Wild, except there's only nine variations that are repeated over and over again. Some of these pips are as simple as landing on a pad in the middle of a forest. That's it. You land and you get a bit of experience and you move your progress bar forward. Some of these are more interesting, like the mazes or the arenas, but I found myself just focusing on the main and side mission and only doing these if I cross paths with them organically rather than seeking them out. It feels wrong to complain about a game having too much content, but as I'm getting older, I find that I'm much more drawn to shorter and higher quality experiences versus games that just artificially extend the game through a bunch of boring copy and paste content. Another issue is the really terrible itemization. There's color-coded loot with offense and defense numbers, and as you progress, they'll have plus damage to specific spells you could augment, but it's terribly boring and mostly inconsequential. If the loot was more interesting, I feel like I'd have more fun exploring the world searching for it, but it feels more like an afterthought. Diablo this is not. On the other hand, I really enjoy dressing up my character, and the fact that the look of your character is unlocked from the items is really nice. There's also a skill tree that's fairly simple and really just augments your spells and abilities. I had plenty of ability points by the end for nearly all the spells that I regularly used, but it added a bit of depth to the game. And really, the combat is where this game shines. You have a ton of tools at your disposal, and it's really fun and fluid combat system. You can assign skills one of 16 different slots, which you can then cycle through. Anything but your basic skill has a long cooldown, so you're going to be needing to cycle through these abilities. The balance here feels a bit odd, like I can turn an enemy into an exploding barrel, which takes that enemy out of combat, and then I can throw that barrel at a group of enemies dealing like 2000 damage, or I can throw a single fireball out that does like 300 damage to one enemy. Because of the cooldowns, you're really going to need to cycle through all of your abilities, but you'll gravitate towards the ones that deal the most damage or offer the most utility. The game really does have a lot of combat encounters, and some of the later ones can be quite challenging, but effective use of your spells, especially if you decide to use the unforgivable ones, can make the game a bit easier. Speaking of that, by the end of the game, I was literally a Death Eater. I had Crucio an enemy, which would curse them, then by hitting them with basic attacks it would spread to all the other enemies. Then I would Avada Kedavara, which would kill everyone on my screen. It was a glorious thing to behold and one of the coolest moments in the game, but also one of the things that feels most out of place, because again, there's no consequences. To acknowledge that I'm literally evil incarnate. I don't know if I wanted a morality system, but it just feels so odd at times how evil you can be, and the game really doesn't address it 
whatsoever. The ending doesn't change. The way people react to you doesn't change. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's just, if you want to get through the game quicker, use the Unforgivable Curses, and there's no consequences. So in the end, I definitely enjoyed my time with the game, but it has some issues. The overworld is full of boring and repetitive side content. The systems in the game can feel very shallow at times. The story, while serviceable, is cliche and really feels out of place in the larger Harry Potter world. With all that said, though, exploring Hogwarts is a magical, magical experience. The combat is a lot of fun, gives you a lot of tools to murder your enemies, and I haven't even touched on so many systems. Flying around on your broom is a joy, collecting animals to fill up your menagerie, and the sim-like aspect of the Room of Requirement were all very well executed. Overall, if you're a fan of the Harry Potter series, or you're looking for a new fantasy action RPG, I can wholeheartedly recommend this game. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. If you did enjoy this, please feel free to check out any of my other videos. I cover a lot of new PC releases, virtual reality, and retro games. And if you like what I'm doing, please do consider subscribing, like my video, and drop me a comment with your thoughts. Again, I want to thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.